Greetings ladies and gents. Today I'm taking another look at my Sanjo Shredder. I really like this little unit and I primarily use mine for uh, composting. But I'm going to show you a few tricks I've learned along the way that also include its main intended purpose for disposal of leaves like buying a million bags. You can look at the unit and tell that it was designed during the days when plastic bags were acceptable for yard waste. With the ever-increasing quantity of leaves and grass clippings being generated, it didn't take uh, municipalities long to figure out that uh, they needed a better procedure for disposal of it. It didn't take them too long to figure out they could compost it. Unfortunately, they found out nobody wanted to compost if it had plastic pieces all throughout the compost. So that switched everybody over to mandating paper bags for yard waste disposal. Well, the sun gel wasn't designed for that, and we're going to look at a means of modifying the sun gel to better accept paper bags here in just a few minutes. Now on to my first tip. When was the last time you checked your motor filters? When sun gel designed the unit, they put filters in the unit, but they're not readily accessible unless you take the motor cover off. So here's how to take the motor cover off. There are six screws. You want to loosen these up and then basically pull the cover straight up. Once you get the cover off, the inlet filter is the one at the start-stop switch. This one's the critical one. It keeps most of the trash out of the electric motor. There's another filter on the discharge side, which is a little bit less critical. You'll note that in this case, I've created my own inlet filter using a piece of carpet padding, and this greatly reduces the amount of trash that I pulled into the electric motor. I usually clean both of mine with a light spray from the hose and then allow them to thoroughly dry and put them back into place. Now for tip number two. Never feed your shred from the power switch side. This is where the inlet filter is for the motor and you'll file that filter up much more quickly if you feed from this side drawing trash into the filter. If you don't periodically inspect and clean them then it means you're looking at an early electric motor failure because the electric motor will overheat and eventually burn itself out. Now for tip number three, periodically inspect your motor spindle for fouling. If anything you're shredding happens to include vines or anything that is of a long and stringy nature, they can easily become wrapped around the motor spindle. This is a pretty tight clearance in here and it won't take too many of them to wrap around it, resulting in binding, excess friction, and you guessed it, an earlier motor failure. As you can see, to access the motor spindle, you first need to take out the little top cover. Then there's a half inch nut that needs to be removed. Then you rock it back and forth side to side until it becomes free. Then you can lift the line carrier straight up off the shaft. As you can see here, I've got quite a lot of roots that are wrapped around mine. Some of them have been on there long enough where they've gotten hot and actually melted their way into the plastic. So it's going to take me a little bit to clean all these off, but it's definitely a necessary procedure to make sure the motor doesn't overload. And I have a motor failure and need to buy a brand new Sun Joe. Tip number four, always buy your line in bulk. If you buy a large spool of it and then cut it to size, you're definitely saving money there. I found that this star-shaped cross-sectional line does a better job of cutting, but the round line lasts longer, so... Make your choice as to which is more important to you. Tip number five, buy it in bulk and cut your line exactly the length you need. In this case, 13 inches. The stock lines all come about one inch too long, which means, of course, you put the line in. Your first revolution is going to trim the line. You're going to have a whole bunch of little half to three-eighths inch pieces of plastic all over the yard or in your compost. Tip number six, if your municipality requires that you use paper bags to dispose of your yard waste, then the best thing to do is buy the large bags and use a long bungee cord to secure them around the exterior of the Sun Joe as I've got shown here in these three photos. This way you don't run any risk of tearing the bag as you're filling the bag up with the Sun Joe. Tip number seven. If your Sun Joe sits too low on the existing legs, the easiest way i found to raise it is to go by the, your favorite box store or the hardware store and pick you up a couple pieces of half-inch conduit. Then you can make the legs any length that you want, up to, of course, about 10 feet, unless you want to join pieces of conduit together. Tip number eight, a better way to make compost. 
trust me, this isn't it. You really don't want to do this trying to bridge it over top of an existing container. The first step in this little project is to remove the four screws holding the lower ring in place. Once you have the lower ring off, check the outside dimension. Mine was 15 and a half inches. And here's a side view and a bottom side looking up view of the ring assembly as inserted through the cardboard, but before I put it back on the main Sunjo body. Now I'm going to put the ring and the cardboard back on the Sunjo. The Sunjo will now sit on the cardboard and the cardboard will now rest on the container I'm shredding into. Once again, this is my prototype unit. I'm going to go back and put it together permanently with plywood. And here's my easier way of shredding with the Sun Joe directly into a trash can. I found out this creates a lot less dust. The only catch with this, of course, is a trash can full of compost weighs about 80 or 90 pounds, so I've got to move it around with a hand truck. Other than that, this works quite well. This is generally the best way i found to make a lot of cheap fertilizer. I generally mix in some fireplace ashes and then periodically put in a little bit of limestone just to go ahead and correct my pH since I'm in a very acid area as far as my yard goes. We later wraps it up. Hope you're liking what you're seeing. If you do, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have some more interesting stuff you're going to want to see coming down the pike here real soon. Take care, y'all. Have a great day.